Bienvenue à tous. Welcome to Reporters here on France 24. I'm Mark Owen. In this edition, Angela Merkel bows out as the German Chancellor after leading the country since 2005. She's become perhaps the most famous face of Europe and certainly one of the main players in every decision that's taken in Brussels. Merkel will be quite an act to follow for sure. But what's the perception of Merkel's time in charge from the inside? Nick Spicer is this week's reporter. He joins us now. Nick, you've been covering Angela Merkel for, well, a decade. Uh, what's she like? She's unique. I haven't met a politician like her in a quarter century of being a foreign correspondent. You can have a press conference with her for an hour and you're not quite sure what the headline is. She seems allergic to making threats, making promises, making grand declarations. She likes to expose her methods of decision making. Uh, in ordinary life, she is very friendly with regular people, not averse to hoisting a pint or having a schnapps with a fisherman. She's got an ordinary daily lifestyle, does her own shopping, publishes her recipe for potato soup. Soup. But of course, she's had an extraordinary political career. I'm going to check out that potato soup, Nick. Thank you very much indeed. Let's take a look then at our report by Nick and Anne Maillet. October the 5th, 2008. In the midst of the global financial crisis, Chancellor Angela Merkel takes pains to reassure the population. Und wir sagen den Sparerinnen und Sparern, dass ihre Einlagen sicher sind. Auch dafür steht die Bundesregierung ein. The country is poised to plunge into recession. Merkel's been in power for three years and her first big challenge is a huge one. Matisse Menzel must confront his own test. He's just taken over the family firm, a medium-sized turbine maker handed down from father to son for three generations. This is our daily bread, classic industrial machines. The machinery of the entire global economy is seizing up. The collapse of the Lehman Brothers Bank in the US has thrown the financial markets into free fall and many governments into panic. But Germany launches two stimulus plans to save the economy. We were very worried. What company boss wouldn't be worried when there are no orders coming in? But the simple fact that we knew there was significant government help available, if we needed it, helped us sleep at night. At the family firm, no one's laid off and business bounces back. She certainly didn't hurt Germany. Things could have been much worse. Angela Merkel's popularity sees a big jump. Mrs. Merkel really stayed on top of things, in charge, and that created a lot of confidence with a very well thought out policy. We used to consider her Helmut Kohl's little girl, but then she became a national leader and we could see that she was respected on the international stage and managed to hold her line. But further south in Greece, the situation is getting worse. These are terrible pictures when you think of it. The financial crisis becomes a debt crisis, hitting hard in a country that learns to hate the German chancellor preaching austerity. Greece is in financial collapse and could take down with it the euro, Europe's single currency. But Angela Merkel, the bloc's most powerful leader, won't budge. Kein Cent für die Griechen, solange die Griechen nicht bereit waren, Eigenleistungen in Reformen zu vollbringen, meine Damen und Herren. Ja. For more than a decade, Greece is forced to drastically cut public spending. So, cuts to salaries and pensions as the number of poor explodes. Almost 35% of the population still lives below the poverty line. I am here because I need your food. I, I don't have no money to buy. This charity was founded in 2008, the year Janice Calamaris lost his job. He never found another. I know what it's like to find yourself in this kind of situation, so I try to show a little solidarity in turn, like they did for me. In 2015, Angry Greek voters elect a left-wing government on promises to stop the endless austerity plans. But Berlin threatens to get Greece expelled from the euro. 
Prime Minister Alexis Tsipras has many conversations with Angela Merkel. He remembers a woman of great intelligence, sensitive but unyielding. She was really worried about the consequences austerity would have on the population. But she thought we had to go through with it, that it was a necessary evil, a sort of purgatory necessary to consolidate the nation's finances. It was an approach that I would qualify as Protestant, undoubtedly related to the values she grew up with and evolved with. But if Angela Merkel thought Greek suffering was a necessary evil, she showed much more compassion just a few months later. We have so much we can do it. Europa in the Flüchtlingsfrage? Geht diese enge Bindung mit den universellen Bürgerrechten kaputt? Sie wird zerstört. It's the summer of 2015, and hundreds of thousands of Syrians are fleeing war at home, gathering at the borders of Europe. Germany provides asylum to more than a million Syrians. Mohammed Yassin moves with his family to Ludwigsfelde, not far from Berlin. A naval engineer, he now works on German shipyards. Altogether, they came up the Balkan route before reaching Germany and being brought to a refugee center. It was October. I remember it. It was raining and snowing. The welcome is warm and heartfelt, but the family quickly discovers another reality. There was a day in the supermarket when I was with my daughter. A man came up to me and said, you damn shitty veiled woman. There are some really mean people here, but there are also some really nice people. Angela Merkel's generous migration policy elevates Germany's image overseas, but at home, it fuels the rise of a small political party created during the financial crisis, the Alternative for Germany, or AFD. In 2015, the AFD becomes fiercely, proudly anti-refugee. Angela Merkel is presented as a public enemy. What happened in 2015 is entirely her fault, and she did not have the right to do it. Do you really want to know how Merkel will be remembered in history, a criminal who betrayed and destroyed her country? In 2017, the AFD wins seats in federal parliament. It's the first time a far-right party is represented there since the end of the Second World War. Among its more radical members is Björn Höcke. We're the only real opposition party in the country. Only the AFD is talking sense. We want to preserve Germany's identity. There's nothing amoral about that. It's the most normal thing in the world. In Berlin, Thomas de Maizière is the Minister of the Interior. For 10 years, he was one of Merkel's closest collaborators. That's when we really started to notice a lot of aggression in the streets. And it really affected Merkel. And yet, he says, the Chancellor never regretted her decision. People often say Merkel opened the borders, but it's not true. She simply refused to close them. There's a big difference. And the fact that she grew up in East Germany played a big role. She grew up in a walled-up country surrounded by barbed wire and didn't want to build new walls. In 2018, Merkel announces that her fourth mandate will be her last. Her popularity rating is at a record low, when, in 2019, a new crisis starts in China. COVID-19 is starting to spread around the world. Germany's first case was detected in January 2020. Merkel, a trained scientist, foresees the danger. 2020 is something over us, with which the world didn't expect. 
Ein bis dahin unbekanntes Virus dringt in unsere Körper und unsere Leben ein. On the Franco-German border, the hospital in Hamburg is preparing for the worst. Jürgen! Philippe Lepper is told to set up a specialized COVID unit with his team. Das ist Jürgen Nohl. And here is the man who made sure everything worked as it should. In the spring of 2020, Germany has spared the worst of the first deadly wave of the pandemic. But nearby in France, in the Moselle region, the virus is killing hundreds. So the hospital takes in six French patients in a single day, all with respiratory problems. The first French patient was placed in this room. These patients were comatose. And we have to underline the work done by our French colleagues, who really chose the patients well from a medical perspective because they were really sick people, but ones who had a realistic chance of pulling through and surviving. Among those first patients was Vincent Konietzny. He and his wife welcome us into their home in Santa Vol. She was the one who lifted me up first. For months, the hospital personnel regularly sends photos and videos. Each week, Christine Konietzny makes the return trip to visit her husband. I made him hot meals, and they would warm them up. It was amazing because the nurses came with a little napkin on their arm as if we were in a restaurant. Frankly, it was. We owe them everything. They saved him twice. My luck was that I was transferred to Germany, that's for sure, and I'm aware of that. I have to thank the entire hospital and the whole system put in place by Merkel. I thank her personally. In the summer of 2020, in talks with French President Emmanuel Macron, Merkel considers the case of another patient, Europe, and they announce the creation of a European Solidarity Fund of 750 billion euros. Außergewöhnliche Ereignisse, und das ist die Pandemie, die uns alle erreicht hat, erfordern auch außergewöhnliche neue Methoden. According to French journalist Jean Quatremer, the Chancellor has never been a passionate European, but now, for the first time, she agrees to foot the bill for others. It's an unexpected about face and a bit late, according to the European Affairs Specialist. It's true that in the end, each time she would do what was right for Europe, which is to say that if Europe blows up, if, for example, the euro disappears, it could hurt Germany. But it's only because it could hurt Germany that she became European. Her will to defend German interests, then, might explain the long reign of the German Chancellor. If her critics say she isn't a woman of vision, she did offer 16 years of stability to a country that isn't fond of drastic change. Today, she's still German's favorite politician. She always gave Germans the impression they were being well governed, that she wouldn't cheat them. Merkel does her own grocery shopping, and that's not to send a signal to voters. She's really like that. And the way she acts like a normal person in the exercise of power is what allowed her to stay around in the long term. It's really one of the secrets of her longevity. It's just one of the many secrets, even paradoxes, of the chancellor nicknamed Muti, or Mom, by Germans all while many call her the most powerful woman in the world. She prepares to leave the stage at the peak of her power and popularity as Germany prepares for a step into the unknown. Nick is uh, still with us. Thank you so much for that report. Um, Angela Merkel loved in Germany. I understand Germans refer to her as Mutti or Mummy, um, but also she has an incredible reputation around the world. Yeah, I mean, I think we can all remember those uh, 
magazine covers where she was described as a leader of the free world. The editorialists say, particularly under President Donald Trump in the United States, that it was all up to her, sometimes Emmanuel Macron. When she, that question was put to her, however, are you the leader of the free world? She said the question itself was grotesque. I don't know if that's false modesty, uh, but look, the Pew Research Agency this uh, month put out some numbers. 77 percent of people in 16 industrialized nation polled think that she is a competent leader, which is a, the record high. They've been following her for 16 years. Uh, in Europe, there's a, there's a diversity of views. Nine out of 10 Swedes and Dutch people think she was a competent leader. In Greece, it goes down to 30 percent. Not surprising, given the austerity program she insisted the country go through. But the words of the uh, former Greek president, Alexis Tsipras, are interesting in this regard. She, he says that she still has an awful lot to be proud of. I think the two most important moments that will shape Angela Merkel's legacy are the ones that departed from German orthodoxy and the CDU's party line. One was how she managed the refugee crisis, when she took the initiative and showed humanity and solidarity. By doing so, she saved Europe's image. The second moment was her decision to launch the stimulus plan during the pandemic. The words there of Alexis Tsipras. Uh, Nick, quite a legacy then. And um, I imagine quite intimidating for whoever succeeds her. Yeah, I would think so. And look, there are big challenges ahead. She didn't solve all the problems in Germany. Uh, Germany's got a balanced budget, or has had for a long time, but has not spent enough on infrastructure. During the pandemic, kids in villages would have to climb a hill in order to download their homework. So there's a lot of investment to be done there. There's an energy U-turn that's taking place in Germany. But Germany has heavy, heavy industry. That needs to be rethought out. There needs to be more electricity available for the people making Mercedes and BMWs down south. Uh, and I think also... The political questions with countries like Russia and China, which are major trading partners, do not go away. Germany likes to express its concerns for human rights, and that human rights and that tightrope uh, will be one upon which the new chancellor will have to walk again. And you, no doubt, walking alongside, telling us uh, every development as it happens. Nick Spicer, thank you very much indeed. Uh, you can see, of course, uh, Nick's report along with Anne May uh, on our website, France24.com. Uh, this is Reporters on France 24. Stay with us, most of all, stay safe.